everybody welcome back to the she's ready pod vlog and whatever else god wants to make it y'all and you already know he has been making it great and even greater because listen y'all i have the Shani, Nikki Moore with me. She has so many business ventures that I can't even name them all oh down because she is that amazing. <laughs> Listen, I literally am so inspired by her. Tell the people hello. How you doing? Hello, everybody. How are you? I am so excited to be here. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited here. to be here. This is amazing. Amazing. <laughs> y'all, better, so y'all better go get one of these. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Shani. Nikki I Moore. love to get one of these. <laughs> People cool. don't have people don't have this, and I'm just so grateful that Aww. I have been. I, how many years has it been now? Oh, girl, do we At even least, know? Mm, maybe 19. Yeah, 18, 19, 19. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe 19. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost been five years. Five years. Five years. <laughs> yes. That is I'm so cool. Oh, I'm excited. That so makes this me so is a happy. Great capstone. Yes. Yes. This I like is so this. good, y'all. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. This is really good. A good catch up and all the things, yes. y'all. So all the things. Um, well, tell them a little bit about yourself. I mean, like I said, you have so many different things. I've I've experienced so many different sides of you. The pastor yeah. side of you. Yeah. The counseling. The all the things. And so yeah. yeah, tell them a little bit about yourself. Well, I mean, I would say that I am. Nikki, mm-hmm. I'm Shanine Nicole McArthur Moore. I'm gonna put that maiden mm-hmm. name in there. Put the whole gotta, thing put out the there. Whole thing Whoa. In there. But yeah, most people call me Nikki, but you know, I'm putting my government name out there. But I know, um, if I were to say about myself, I'm a daughter of, mm-hmm. of the Lord. Yeah, I'm a daughter of Shirley, Shirley <laughs> yes. Alexander. I am my only child. Um, and so I don't know. People consider me in different roles: pastor, friend, mm-hmm. coach. I don't know. I, I, I think at one point, the way that I look at it, it's just that I'm consistently myself in any space. Mm. And so it's like, I'm Nikki. And then however I may serve you in a particular role, whatever is needed. And that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, what else I can say about myself? I love to laugh. I love laughing. Mm-hmm. I think laughter You is, do. <laughs> I do. I like having a good time. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I just feel like when it comes down to kind of like certain spaces, like why we always got to be grumpy? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yes. We, I don't want to be grumpy. I want to enjoy life in whatever phase. My marriage, I want my relationship with God, my friends, yes. you know what I mean? And so I have a wonderful husband, Martin, oh, yes, which yes. we probably will be talking about tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, I love my husband. We've been married for uh, 14 years in July. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so um, currently I'm in school. Oh, yes. And I'm excited about this. One more year. Marriage and family therapy. So you got Period. your whole therapist out here. Yes. Yes. A therapist. I, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, so I, basically the way that I look at it is I really want to see an intersection between faith and therapy. Mm. Um, because I feel like there's a lot of stuff, which we're going to be talking about today. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so a lot good. of conversations that need to be had mm-hmm. in religious spaces. Yes. And um, not just the church, even in our own life. You know? Right. Right. Um, and so what else about me? I don't know. I just love having fun. I love worship. Mm-hmm. That's a whole other oh, side. Oh, God. People don't even. Y'all, she can sing. Oh, my And gosh. she don't even be singing more recently. But, I, you know. I have not sung in such a long time. Um, but. But we're going to get back to it. We are. We mm-hmm. are. We are. I love mm-hmm. having a good. Girl, I just had a good worship moment, too. Oh, just being in the presence of the Lord. And just, woo. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Like, lashes off. Makeup dripping. Yes. Everything. That's, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Get ugly. Yes. Get ugly. I yes. love it. I love that. And um, outside of that, I just, again, I just love having a good time. Mm-hmm. I love people. I do. I love people and I love God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would say that's that's pretty much myself. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I will say that shows. It shows that you love people oh. and you love God. Every time you're in a room, like I still remember the first time I met you. We were, we were at LeGrand, and you <laughs> walked up to me, and you were like, you're so beautiful. Because you are so and I literally, beautiful. And you, I, but it was like what I needed in that moment. And I literally was like, I'm about to cry because <laughs> thank you. Like, I don't always feel it all the time. Like, I wanted to just, but you're, you just invited me in. It was just so yeah. peaceful and so beautiful. I literally was just like, I'm going to crumble in her arms and tell her that oh. I don't always feel beautiful all the time. Like, you know, it just felt so safe. Really? It felt so, and you promote that. Like, yeah. you promote that like people you meet them and they're ready to tell you their whole life at the one sit that is really they just true like um so one time you know no uh, that actually happened me and martez were actually at a wedding and we were about to get some food mm-hmm. and literally did not look, know the lady at all we sit down 
And then she was like, so let me tell you about my life. And Martez <laughs> looked at me like, you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm, I, I, I've i gotten comfortable with it. Yeah. And you still, but yeah, people will tell the business. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the, the way you just approach people, it makes you be like, oh, home, safety. <laughs> and so That's I was good. literally ready to be like, okay, what 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 else you need from me? Like, I'll give you anything. <laughs> like, do you need $100 today? Yeah. Like, I'm going to give it to you. Like, Girl. it was just so amazing. Like, um, and it was, I mean, then we had our whole journey. Yeah. You know, I was getting married oh, in a very girl. short period of time. Two yes. months. Two months. I can't even believe that. <laughs> like, I forgot. We were meeting every week. Every week. Or we met twice, twice a, week. a week. We met twice a week Woo. for eight weeks. Woo! We, had, we had to do 16 sessions. Yes. So, we got very close. We did. Very fast. Um, And it was just a beautiful uh, process. Oh, like, wow. I, I, I recommend it. To everybody, like, y'all, no, don't go to that person. You need to go to Pastor Nikki, Pastor Martez. Like, their perspective, the way y'all, I mean, just it's work like with a marriage us. marriage boot camp. It was so beautiful. <laughs> and, but I mean, in a two-month span, I'm like, y'all, if you don't have to do it in two months, don't do it in please two don't. months. Yeah. Please do it spaced out. But, yeah. I mean, I was grateful that I got to do that with y'all. Yeah. I got to know y'all a lot and really get invited into your marriage yeah. and all the things. And I'm, I'm grateful for that to this day. Girl. And we've still been connected ever yes, since. We have. Um, and, and I'm so proud of you. Both, thank you. I'm telling you, I'm so proud of you and Reggie. Like the growth thank and just you. to see what God has done. And even the goals that, you know, thinking about just where you guys were when we were at that table, just talking about different things and mm-hmm. you guys pursuing and being persistent. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, we're going to work through this. We're going to work through the barriers. We're going to work through the little challenging times mm-hmm. and to see what you're doing now. Yes. Girl, yes. God is faithful. Almost yes. five years. It's been a, it's and that's what I'm saying. Years. I told Martez, I was like, when we do this, when he's with these couples, like the mm-hmm. one thing we're serious, we're, tr- we're on that whole sustainable. We yes. know about the whole like, it's a nice wedding. We want a healthy marriage. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, we all and I love health. that. Mm-hmm. I love that. And yeah, to this day, I'm still using the tools. I go back and look at those binders Girl. and all the things we talked about. Or I'll remember something that um even like Pastor Mark says, he has said something to me that I say to this day. Like he reminded me that like, um, he was like, Iman, you're a human being, not a human doing. Yes. Like, and you get to just be, you yes. know. And so I tell people that all the time. I'm like, yes. yo, I'm just being. Like, I'm just being like yeah. this is what I'm giving you and I'm just I can just be in this yeah. space um and it's taught me a lot or whatever like that and so That's um good. you know and then we got married mm-hmm. and I remember do you remember we had our first little tip our little Whoa, first run I in remember. <laughs> I and remember. I called you and I was like girl I left with my mama house I you know uh and you were like well <laughs> <laughs> you were laughing you know you were laughing we joked about it at first and then you was like yeah, you said something along the lines like, well, you should have called me prior to yes. you leaving the house. Yes. Like, so you were wrong. And yes. I was just like, uh, I what happened to the nice lady that I was talking to all the time? <laughs> I was still there. I was still there. You were still there. It was Girl, so sweet. But, but you was, was just like, like, yes. And you, you were know at you're your wrong. Mom. You're already there. So you calling me like, hey, here the problem. But I've already made the solution. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm like, Girl, I got up in the middle of the night. I drove my mama's house. I can't do it. Or whatever. And you was just like, yeah, you wrong. <laughs> I was like, yes. me? But he. And one of the things I love that you taught me to this day that makes me, has made me a better woman, was to focus on myself. Mm -hmm. Um, And it can feel like, I'm married now, I need to be focused on this other person. Mm -hmm. But you literally taught me how to care for myself Mm -hmm. and how to be a good wife in a way Mm -hmm. that, you know, um, still took care of me. Like, Mm -hmm. and um, so we walked individually, even in that, what about that? And you taught me how to be emotionally well and all those things. And I'm still growing in that. Like, um, that's so I'm not, I'm not, I have not arrived, by the way. (laughs) I have not arrived there. Mm -hmm. I still, I have some days I'm like, you did so good today advocating Mm -hmm. for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then the other days, like, you could have done better. Like, <laughs> you could have done better yeah. today. Like, you were able to just all emotions, and yeah. you actually didn't say anything. You didn't even use any good yeah. language, you know. Um, and so I'm still learning in that area. Yeah. You know, I, I think, and, and again, I'm probably going to get into that encouragement mode because I mm-hmm. think a lot of times we do look at things like, you know, I didn't do good or mm-hmm. it, it was bad today, when in actuality we're, we're living out our life, mm-hmm. you know, and so – um, we're learning how to communicate how we feel and what we're thinking about. And in different situations, sometimes it's easier. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. But why do we have to say that the difficulty is something bad? Mm. It just shows us where we may need to continue to develop. Like, yeah. you know what? I didn't have language today, mm-hmm. but that's okay. I still have tomorrow. And one thing, maybe I don't have language, but today what have I, what I've gained out of this 
was awareness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, so, so I good. just want to say that to you. So yeah. if you were like, you know what? I was very articulate in how I felt. And mm -hmm. I said no. And then the next day, it's just like, I didn't really do well. Well, maybe that relationship you were in mm -hmm. is a little bit different from the one you said felt comfortable yeah. stating your ground. Yeah, so, so yeah, no, no that's bad. So good. Mm -hmm. That's so good. And I, and I love that what you just said, too, because it um, also makes me like slow down to take inventory in those yes. places. Um, because like, okay, yeah, you might've did good advocating at work. Right. Yeah. But there's might be something at home that you like, yeah. I struggled there. What about yes. that? And, um, and to be like, okay, both of them are good moments because you get to see where you're still, you still can work yes. at. And so it, yeah. I love that. And it also kind of shows the different complexity of the relationship. Like mm -hmm. in some spaces with our jobs, right. We don't have as much emotional, um, depth or value mm -hmm. or maybe ties. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to kind of be like, no, you know, um, right. but when it comes down to our spouse, it's not necessarily that we're just not wanting to say, we want to say no, we want to communicate so many other things. Mm -hmm. Right. So okay. it's kind of like, I want to say no, but I also want to get, um, ensure that my no is not rejection. Mm -hmm. Or I want to say yeah. no, but I'm also trying to say I'm still open. I want to say no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I get what you say. Yeah, so it's good. just kind of like, well, I don't know if it's really a no. Sometimes I say no, because I feel some type of way mm -hmm. and no just stops everything. Yeah. But I really would say yes, but I want you to value me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. So, there's so many oh God, other, that's so good. You know, that's that so sense? good. Yes. So it's kind of like, Maybe it ain't even know that I'm trying to say. That's why I was saying, mm -hmm. like, you know, we, we sometimes we're just so hard on ourselves about the way that we perform, mm -hmm. right? And I think mm -hmm. that a lot of that comes from, like, society. A, a lot of it comes from the way that we're raised. It's like when we're doing well, hoorah, mm -hmm. look at you. Right, right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we're, like, striving every day to be that person when in actuality, you know, we're just, we're learning, we're we're people who are just learning life and mm -hmm. we're discovering things. Um, but I think sometimes because of like social media, um, sometimes our environment, the people we're around, mm -hmm. it's always this need to continue to kind of achieve. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. Like you ain't did that today. You know? <laughs> right. You like, oh, stand up for yourself. And you be like, ah, oh, ew. You don't <laughs> right. even know why you're doing it. Right. You know what I mean? I just want to get an A, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, bump that. I'm tired of getting grades in life. Right. You like, know what I mean? Whose grading scale is this even on? Like, exactly. Yeah. Who? You know who was the I mean? teacher? Who, had, who? Who, who gave us this? People thing? out here trying to live. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> This day to day inflation, Clearly. life is happening. Like, I know, baby. I cried today. I I'm getting did. the E for effort. You know what I mean? That ain't even on the scale. Okay, I cried today, and I'm still proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> like you know. Um, yes. So I love so, that. Yeah, I just wanted to say that to you. This is what I, my thought. Mm -hmm. You know, we're more prone to want to do things. We're more mo motivated when we're encouraged. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have a lot of language that we say to ourselves that are, is very discouraging. Yeah. But we so think good. that it's motivational. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Oh, like you need to do better. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you can do better than this. And I get it. Right. But it's just kind of like, well, what about if instead of just saying we can do better, why don't we just do better? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. or what about maybe the language is maybe instead of me saying you could do better, it's like, let's pause for a minute and just see what areas that are we finding difficult, mm -hmm. right? So good. And so from, from pausing and taking a, a moment, we may discover, hey, this may be some area of hurt, maybe mm -hmm. it's a, a fear, or maybe you just don't like it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this, ain't some, this isn't for me. It ain't got to have a negative view. Mm -hmm. It just means maybe me and this don't match. Right, you know, right. Let me go some, do something else. And it's, listen, all of that is so good. I, yeah. That's the thing I love about you because I can be like, oh, this is such, and you like, no, this is beautiful. And I'm like, girl, no, life is falling apart. What are you talking about? <laughs> Everything is on fire. Yes, you're like, yes. You're in the perfect place. Like, and I'm just like. I can make some people oh, mad. Listen. I be making people mad with it because they be coming to me and they be like, my life is just a mess. <laughs> and I just be like, you know, you're actually in a good place. I'm like, Pastor Nick, I go, Pastor Nicky, please, not today. Yeah, you know? people actually did. I have had that happen. It was like, I don't need that today. I don't need that. What I need you to do, Pastor Nicky, is tell me, like, this this is horrible. You know what I mean? And I was just like, <laughs> you, know, like, and like, you know what I mean? Cause, but I, I get it. And, and I, I have learned though. Cause mm -hmm. I think, um, when you're in something and I've mm -hmm. been in that space, right? Yeah. When, when I'm in it, a person is saying, 
I, I can see God working through that. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, you can't see <laughs> Right. This where he hell. working at? Working this at where? All, uh, where nobody. You where know is he clocked in at? Because he's right here. <laughs> he has left the building. You know what I mean? And he is watching me. And I promise you, because I know he saw this yesterday. Right. You know, so, but I, I do understand it. And I think where I have grown, and um, I will say that me and uh, my therapy class and my program, mm-hmm. it really has help me see how to encourage people Mm -hmm. without trying to take them out of the bubble that they're in. Mm -hmm. And that's a challenge that I think for me, because my spaces have always been like religious spaces Mm -hmm. that we have this uh, propensity to want to fix and solve. Mm Because we think that that's our mission. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when people are going through stuff, it's like, Oh, I'm going to direct you to the positive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, let's forget about where you are. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, Jesus didn't ignore where people were. Right. Right. It was right smack dab in the middle. Right. You get what I mean? To the point that if Mary and Martha are crying, he crying with them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or maybe not he crying with them, but he's crying because he's also impacted by that. And so what I have learned since then Mm -hmm. is learning how to be like, you know, if you're saying this is horrible, I maybe I don't understand it personally, but let's just sit in this moment. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to try and make it okay. Right. Right. You know? That's something I learned in my uh, when I was getting my master's for counseling, y'all. Mm-hmm. I did not finish, That's but okay. uh, I'm I'm gonna go back. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, that was something that I learned then. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, just that you don't have to try to like move people out of that. Yes. Or like that. And so now I allow I hold space for people hold to space. feel yes. it. Like so, I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna hold space for you. Like if you yes. want to cry, you want whatever, something, and you know, and I'm with you like Ooh. in that. And when you're ready, yes, you can tell me like, okay, yes. now that I've expressed this and I've been in this, you know, in the middle of this, yes. it's feeling so heavy and so weighty. Now I'm ready to receive yes the next level of whatever. Girl. Like that has changed stuff for me because I'm just like, why they not getting it? Why you know like that? Like I'm trying it's to tell them, you. right? I'm like, <laughs> stop it, quit cry. Yes. You know that. And then finally, I'm just like, but. Baby, you have your days when yes. you just can't. When you're in the middle of something where you don't feel like you can come out of it or what like that, and like, and what yes. you don't want nobody fussing at you or trying to give you positive patty at that time, you know that. Yes. So like, what would you need? Yeah. And so even asking people that, what yeah. do you need right now? Yes. Like, do you need a pep talk or do you just need me to hold yes. you right here and you know like and have your back? And either one is okay. Like, girl, what what's crazy to me when you even saying that? It made me think about the reason why it was so difficult for me in the past to be able to hold space for people Mm -hmm. um, or to say, hey, what do you need? Because I wasn't asking myself those questions. Mm, That's so good. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't even creating space for myself so that I could just be okay with where I was. I was never okay for a while. And never is a strong word, right? Mm -hmm. But I will say often in areas where I felt like I – could improve or emotionally I didn't like the way that I was, you know, handling myself because I want to have this kind of positive outlook. Mm -hmm. I never really held space or allowed myself just the space to just be undone. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? I'm trying to figure out how can I make myself better Mm -hmm. or come on, I need to do this, you know, because we got stuff to do as if me being undone was getting a get it in the way of my progress. Yeah. And I didn't even recognize that me being undone was so it was such a, a benefit to mm-hmm. my progress. It was just a, a benefit. It was health. Yeah. It was you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so I even think about that like a lot of times what I've learned in just my therapy space that some of this stuff that I'm trying to offer to people I need to actually kind of receive myself. Mm-hmm. You know what that's I mean? That's definitely what I learned when I was in there. I was like, oh, you need this. <laughs> Uh-oh. Girl. That's for yes. me. <laughs> like, exactly. Oh, God. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I think learning to hold space um, and whatever that looks like, let's look, giving myself the the opportunity, the freedom to be just mm-hmm. like jacked up. Yeah. Yeah. That thing was freeing. Listen. And now when I'm coming to you or talking to anybody else, they're, they're, messiness mm-hmm. doesn't make me uncomfortable. Yeah. Cause that's something I did learn recently. Mm-hmm. My teacher was saying, she said, you know, a lot of times, even when people are crying, I'll never forget this. That's mm-hmm. why I like to get some tissue. Yeah. She was saying somebody was crying and was trying to hurry up and give them tissue. And she said, stop trying to give them tissue. Mm-hmm. And I was, I mean, in our whole class, like, why? <laughs> you know, I mean, girl, it's not. Coming. Right. And, we like, and she said, her snot is bothering you, not her. Oh, and when I tell you that was a word for me, because it made me realize, even when we see people in situations or maybe mm-hmm. in different 
challenging moments in their life, sin, or maybe when we say they backslide, their life bothers us more mm. than sometimes it bothers Shh. God. You know why? Because God knows that he has the capacity to change this. Yeah. God knows holistic. But for us, we we that stuff bothers us, mm-hmm. right? And I've just been asking the Lord for more and more. Teach me to be filled with your mercy. Ooh. And, you know, I don't even, I don't fear that I'm going to compromise. Mm-hmm. That's and, and, again, some people be like, Pastor Nick, you know, we need to be careful. Yes, but I'm not. I don't want to be motivated to be better through fear at any point. Right. You get right. what I'm saying? So my thought is if I see somebody and they're undone and they're not put together and they're mm-hmm. falling apart, now I, in the past, I have always been driven by fear to try to help that person. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and the reason is I'm afraid, like I'm afraid for you and right. I get it. It's right. Like, right. like, I don't want you to, you, to go out here and you die and you don't. Mm-hmm. But my thing is, is that, you know, fear has never in the hands of, of mankind has never been a good tool. Ooh. You know what I mean? And if literally, if God is telling me in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, he's not giving me the spirit of fear, then why am I going to use fear in any way as to wield it in my relationship? Mm-hmm. Why am I going to use that to wield it with myself? Man. You get what I mean? Yes. I'm over and here so it's like just kind of like, and all of that happened with a box of tissue. When that girl, when that lady told me, she was like, her snot is making you uncomfortable. And I start realizing you know, I I rush a lot to try to fix situations because it look ugly. Mm-hmm. Oh, we I'm not no. Yeah. We gonna we gonna work this out and we're gonna see how this this situation. You know, what does God want to do? Uh, I know I feel like I'm just giving all these scriptures, but this mm-hmm. thing popped up my heart. Philippians two thirteen says it is God at work in you. Mm-hmm. It, it is God at work in you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think we get in the way of the work that God is trying to do, not only in others, but even ourselves. Yes. And we just like, mm-hmm. you know, this yeah. ugly. Right. God is like, that's fine. Mm-hmm. And by whose standards? Yeah. It's ugly. I'm not worried about it. Right. God ain't stressing. Right. Oh, when I say I love this, so this is actually something I just kind of walked through with okay. in, in my marriage okay. or like that. And so, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we had a, this big, you know, blow out argument and we were doing so good, right? Mm-hmm. We were doing so good. We were on this good mm-hmm. path. Ain't had no arguments. And when it happened, mm-hmm. I just was like, it was all a fraud. It was all a fraud. Like, I thought <laughs> we were doing good. You know, like that. I mean, I was just like, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I had, I mean, it was, it was very dramatic. Yes. It was so dramatic. Some things were real. Listen, and I was just like, we're done. We, we, did, we can't make it anymore. You know, that, yeah. whatever. And I know the Lord just was like, please cut, cut, baby. Please, y'all carrying on bad. <laughs> yes. But um, by the time I made it home, like by the time I made it home, me and Reggie were back talking again, mm-hmm. and that is the quickest we've yes. ever right. gotten back after an argument. Yes. It was the quickest. The next day, we were friends to each other, yes. very holding hands, very touchy, yes. or whatever like that. And so the next day, I was just like, "But God, I'm mad because how could we get back here? Like even though we were talking, I still mm-hmm. had this like angry because I don't like the ugly. Mm-hmm. I don't like the." Like I, I have such a fear of it. Yes. I realize how big my fear is that yes. if it's messy, then I'm scared everything is gonna fall apart. Like yes. God, if there's any if there's any blemish or stain on us, mm. then I'm like, how are people gonna perceive that? How are people gonna see us? Like, you know, we're in ministry, and what about you know that all these different things? And I was just like, oh, I got some, mm. and God literally said to me, He was like, celebrate, and I was like, hello. Celebrate what? What? There is nothing to celebrate. I'm like, we just had a bad blowout. Literally, was we we brought, we said the D word, and if you don't know the D word, we was said the D word. We yes. said divorce. We said we're done. Like I was like, it was Ooh. done. Divorce. All these words that all these bad D words that you just don't touch, right? Mm-hmm. We were like, yeah, but we gonna figure it out. Like all of that, all of that happened or whatever. And I ain't talking about a long time ago. This was this was uh, what like a month or so ago, right? Mm-hmm. And um, literally, and the Lord was just like, celebrate. And how, and then I'm, I'm pouting with him. I'm like, hey, you're gonna celebrate. And I know we back talking. And I know we da da da. And he was like, that, that. And he reminded me of when we used to argue, when both of us were like, I'm leaving, I'm going this way, I'm going this way, or we're gonna be in the same house, we're not gonna talk for weeks, yes. we're gonna whatever that. And the Lord was just like, this is victory. It is. Like, and he told oh. me to see every moment like this as faithfulness. Yes. Like, because yes. It, it, not even just that, um, you know, like, oh, we recovered well, but even that Ooh. it exposed something else that we get to work on together. 
like Girl, that now we cry. know like okay cool we get to work on how we deal with our conflict together in our marriage in a in a good way like you know and so the lord was just like baby celebrate mm-hmm. like celebrate you know and so that was just a beautiful moment for me and so when you're talking about the like me not wanting to see the snot or the tears or the whatever like that i'm like that literally is me i'm like god don't let me see the snot and tears in my marriage i don't want to see the mess like i want it to look spotless clean in but it, and i'm like even that to who and for why to who and for why for you or for everybody else do you want other people to be pleased do you want like and, and i had to realize even all of that i was like i don't want to even be, be an embarrassment to other people mm-hmm. i don't want to let people down i don't want you know people come to me all the time and be like i love seeing you and reggie do this together and all this and that and i'm just like oh you know that and so i'm just like man people are watching us you know Mm -hmm. and i don't want i don't want to be giving off a fraud like that Mm -hmm. same week i shot a marriage episode you Mm -hmm. know like that and Mm -hmm. i was just like god am i gonna have to get up here and fake to these people that Mm -hmm. like i'm okay like that everything is okay and he was like you're not faking yes your marriage is good and that's and this is the thing what i one i just want to say one thank you for just sharing in that way like Mm -hmm. just a moment not even trying to get to another point in Mm -hmm. what you said i want to just kind of pause and be like man just the the beauty and celebrating your uh the vulnerability Mm -hmm. for you to share that moment Mm -hmm. because that's another thing right that we would go through those moments and then we're in a space where we know how to compartmentalize them mm-hmm. and they only happen in our home. Mm-hmm. And then we present ourselves in a way. And it's not necessarily, we're trying to present ourselves falsely, but because we've been a part of, um, a societal kind of like microcosm that will say, this is how you do it. Mm-hmm. Like, like how you said, like, I don't want to be a fraud. So what's a fraud? Mm-hmm. So you're telling me that in order for me to be authentic, that means that I have to consistently express that there is no conflict in my marriage mm. because relationships don't have conflict because mm-hmm. why we love Jesus. Mm. I mean, the disciples was arguing in the boat. You know what I mean? I'm <laughs> like, like, I'm saying, and he shook us, you know, some of them was married, but I'm saying like they literally were Jesus in the boat and they having conflict. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, I mean, if Jesus in the middle of conflict, Woo. if Jesus in the middle of people and they have a serious conflict, Jesus. I mean, if he, Jesus. Can't, if he can't make it better. Jesus. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and it's not even saying that he couldn't make it better. Mm-hmm. What it's saying is that he allowed those moments. Mm-hmm. And if, if, a, if a man who can literally calm the sea and, and literally stop any kind of storm, he can tell it to cease at the beck end of his word. Mm-hmm. And you telling me there are waves and storms of conflict in a boat and mm-hmm. he will still let that junk happen. You, you know why? Because he understands oh. that this right here will not take you out. The same way that I knew that me going to sleep on this boat while we're trying to go to the other, other side, that's not going to take us out. I said we're going to the other side. Mm. And I feel like a lot of times in our life, we don't have that confidence. It, we lack the confidence mm-hmm. in in God concerning the things that we have. Yeah. So when we do experience conflict, all we see around us is the inevitable like end. Mm-hmm. We don't see victory yeah we don't see celebration Ooh, you get what i mean yes but if, if somebody in the boat would have taken the thought like why they up here screaming we might die we might die. oh my god <laughs> <laughs> right. i can't even swim <laughs> and then somebody would be like hey jesus in back <laughs> somebody would be like child with my blanket <laughs> right oh Look, jesus and jesus with us he got it this man that made this stuff you know what i mean yes because if he's gonna die we're gonna die with him <laughs> right. i guess we're gonna have it's gonna be better oh, well, you know and yeah. I, I just think but i like you said i think in our marriage and this is one of the things i think for me and my husband even with our whole ministry live more life mm-hmm. we want to create safe spaces for people i want to create safe space for people mm-hmm. so that they can feel like hey this this language that we keep saying, mm-hmm. you know, why it's bad. Who is saying that? Right. And, and I, honestly, I, I keep saying, like, who is saying that? I know people who say mm-hmm. that. You get what I mean? And I feel like we should start gaining the uh, the unction to kind of, in the spaces that we have the authority, let's start changing this language. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and it's not like I got to come every Sunday and be like, look what Martez did to me. Or mm-hmm. look what I did to Martez. Right, right. That don't make me any more <laughs> authentic either. Because right. I think some people think they about to air all their dirty laundry to show dysfunction mm-hmm. at being dysfunctional it doesn't make you more authentic than anybody else. right nobody you know what I mean? <laughs> like that's not, not what we're right. promoting look at my what... trash you know? <laughs> like, we're not that, promoting that <laughs> we're not promoting that but what we're saying is is that we want to embrace that we're 
humans mm-hmm. and, but christ lives in us yeah and so that's the whole point even to the world mm-hmm. I, I can't i'm not gonna say i'm just like you yeah you know i mean we're human right but i have been given a new nature mm-hmm. in christ jesus and i'm saying even to you like even though we are in the world we're not of it and so yeah. there's that difference but that not being of it gives me the confidence mm-hmm. that when i'm going through the same thing that you're going through i don't have to think i'm about to die mm-hmm you Listen, know what I mean? Even yeah. when I do think I'm about to die and I'm embarrassed, I just be like, God, I'm good. You know Listen, what I mean? And does that make it's sense so good. Yes, saying? because even even that, I think Sunday, so Sunday we had a whole, we call it third service. It is yeah. how we have like a little extra moment and it kind of go yeah. over whatever that we call yeah. it third service. It's not a little third service, but it was a moment and I went to a wife, you know, and I was sitting down and she would started telling me just like, I don't think we're going to make it. We had this big room. Yeah. We da da da. Yeah. And I looked at her and I smiled. And I said, celebrate. Yeah. Like, and I thought about, and I was just like, God, you're faithful. Yeah. Like that, like, even if it wasn't so even true. for me, you know, that, like, mm-hmm. it's like, oh God, like, I'm so grateful that I walked through that this week yeah. because here's a wife who needed to hear that. Like, yeah. they, they, you know, like who, who wanted to be like, ain't no way, yeah. ain't no way. And, I, and she was telling me stuff and she like, yeah, I know. It's, you know that, and that, I'm like, girl, you ain't got to be embarrassed. Yes. You, I was just here this week, but you know what the Lord told me? celebrate and ever since then she's been messaging me going like you know what girl i'm celebrating like today was you know it was hard it was tough we had some hard conversations she was like you know and i was like celebrate and i was just like and let him be and let him grow and all these things i was like and you do the same you be you grow you all those things i was like all of it is good like it's growth it's learning yeah and i was like yeah i was like the lord kind of showed it to me as like school like i get to be in class and i get to learn from him like these moments that's why I say I call him faithfulness now because I get to learn from him. Yes. He shows me something every yes. single time. Yes. Like, and it, but that's if you want to learn now. Yes. Um, yes. So if you want to slow down and be like, all right, cool. So, you know, after that, me and Reggie had a conversation and we were talking about, and I shared this on the last, uh, one of our last episodes. So I don't want to be like, oh, we heard this already, but I shared about how um, after the conversation, we were talking about conversation style. Yeah. And so he like, if you take the long way around, you've lost me. Okay. It wouldn't have happened if we didn't argue, though. Yeah. But And I'm like, with me, I want to know what happened to you when you were five and how it's affecting you now. Yeah. And, you know, whatever. and I'm like, that happened because you, you know, that happened back then. Yeah. And da-da-da like that. And I can trace all the different things yeah. over there. And he like, I don't care what happened to you when you were five. Like, not yeah. in a way, like, I don't care. Yeah. But when you're telling me a certain story, okay. if you take that way around, okay. I might miss some of the detail of the stuff you actually wanted me to hear. Or yes. whatever like that. And he yes. like, and I need you to know that because yes. it's times you haven't felt heard. Yes. And it was because of that. And yeah. not because I didn't want to hear you. Mm-hmm. He was like, that's just not my, like, conversation style yeah. or whatever like that. And I, and at first I was just like, but I want to tell him everything or whatever like that. And so, and the Lord was just like, no, like, but you also want him to comprehend and hear when you would have like that. And so, mm-hmm. like, that might be how you talk to your friends. Yeah. I was like that, and that's okay, like yeah. that. But for him, give him the facts, give him the part that he needs, yeah. like that. Two o'clock tomorrow, and, be and there. I, and I also that. say mm-hmm. that I think too, being able to communicate your why. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, if the goal is like you said, in this situation, I'm talking to my husband, mm-hmm. and I actually want to be heard. I yeah. want him to hear what I'm saying. Then take take the short route mm-hmm. so he hears. But it's okay in certain moments where you communicate to him. I think in this moment in engaging with you, I want not, I don't want you to know me. I want to know you. Mm, And then when you're, when he knows that, Mm -hmm. then he understands your long route is really not because you're just using a whole bunch of words. Mm. You you got a whole bunch of questions. You want to know him. And then he can appreciate it more. Mm -hmm. And he's not thinking then it can lessen his anxiety that he has to recall. Because, see, mm. I realize, even my, my husband, I can see that look on his face when I'm talking a long time. Mm-hmm. And he just be, it almost like he be freaking out like, Yeah, okay, yeah, same. I, I didn't, my, my cap has already passed, mm-hmm. and she's still talking. And she gonna ask me to recall. I ain't gonna have it. <laughs> and <laughs> I remember telling him one day, like, Oh, you're good. You don't have to. It, it, in the anxiety, mm. and it made him more available to me, because it was just kind of like, in his heart, he wants to be the best for me. Mm. But he's showing me, in order for me to produce what he perceives his best, I need short. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. But when I was able to tell him, oh, I, you don't, 
I, that's not necessary. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm sharing all of this because I just want to be known. Or I'm asking you all these questions because I want to get to know you. Yeah. And so, does that make sense? Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's so good. I was like, oh, I love, like, yeah, that just blessed me. I was just like, oh, yeah. you saw me? I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah, so you don't have to, you know, I mean, and again, mm-hmm. we do, I, I really believe in accommodating our spouses and even people understanding, but I also think the more we become self-aware about what we're actually trying to do or trying to accomplish, Mm -hmm. we can communicate it. Now, even after you say, well, I want to know more of you. If he was just like, well, I don't want to tell you, then that's a boundary. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that. Right. 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 That's a boundary. It's just kind of like, why? You know, Mm -hmm. and it's because we're trying to comprehend, but he set a boundary like, Hey, Mm -hmm. I don't want to give more information. That's different. But sometimes that may not even be the case. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just that we haven't communicated our real desire because we don't really know it, Mm -hmm. you know? But it's, it's we learning. Yeah, yeah, and 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 beautifully, right after that, he literally was like, "Okay, so then it might be helpful for you to tell you, to tell you this." And he just walked me through some different things, and I was just like, "Oh man, that's but what honestly, you wanted." We never had that argument. We would have never had that conversation. Yes, that's what I'm saying. And that's, that's why what I was I'm saying. like the faithfulness of God. I was gonna share something when you said mm-hmm, faithfulness; yes. it caught my attention because you kept saying the Lord was telling you faithfulness, right? Mm-hmm. And then I was looking it up, and it was talking about how faithful means loyal and steadfast Mm. and so when you say that like the faithfulness of god i think when we think about faithfulness in a marriage concept we're just thinking about like a person not cheating and them being consistent Mm -hmm. and being there but when i think about uh even the steadfast thing it, it made me think like oh steadfast literally means resolute and unwavering Mm -hmm. and so i thought to a person when a person is steadfast it's literally that they refuse it's like this refusal like i'm gonna continue Mm -hmm. but that's even in the face of opposition and so when i think about the lord establishing this kind of tone of faithfulness in Mm -hmm. your marriage is highlighting the conflict that you're gonna deal with it's dealing with the hey i'm gonna continue to persist even though I'm experiencing these different mm-hmm. difficulties. So I think, I don't know. I just feel like that says so much about your marriage. Even when you kept saying like, you know, I don't want to be a fraud. I'm like, actually, I feel like the Lord is proving you. Mm. You know, like how it talks about like uh, with goal, like mm-hmm. being proven. Like, I think it's showing how rich your marriage is mm. because it's kind of like, look at this bounce back. Yeah. Look at this recovery. Mm-hmm. Look how we're navigating through marital conflict and how it's impacting us yeah and then how we're in turn allowing this conflict to prove us Mm -hmm. it's showing it's making us even more genuine than we were before Mm -hmm. like instead of running from conflict why don't why don't we allow embrace the conflict Mm -hmm. and allow it to make us better yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and it it already has in those past few weeks like so it's it's been it's been beautiful like it's another side i'm like Hey, I'm telling you this because you know, and, and he's just like, Thank you, I needed to hear that. Well, you know, so these past few weeks have just been beautiful. And I'm just like, Oh, God, like, mm-hmm. then you're like, Thank you for that moment, you know. Mm-hmm. But in the moment, you don't see, you don't see, girl. No, you want to mess up the streak, like how I be feeling about the Bible app, <laughs> yeah. And be like, Oh, you're doing so good, and then you forget right. one day, you, you like, forget oh. one day, you like, Yes, and that's how I be feeling in my marriage sometimes. I'll be like, We was doing good, we got eight weeks yes. of just good time, and then I'll be so mad, mm-hmm. I just be like, why did we have to argue? Right. And it's just like, Nick, well, what was you trying to do? <laughs> well, I didn't want to argue. Right. I didn't want to argue. And then I'd be mad at myself because I go back and I listen to what I said. And I was like, oh, that was dumb. Mm-hmm. Oh, that wasn't true. Mm-hmm. Oh, dang it. Why did I get so upset? Right. I'd be so ashamed. Yeah, that was I say. When I traced back the argument, I was like, that was the dumbest <laughs> yes. ever to oh start that gosh. argument. Like, yes. like, it was like, how did this get started? Yes. Oh, By something gosh. silly. I remember we fussed about a, a song before. Our pers- perspective about a song, really? Yeah, and it, he said something. He was like, "I don't, I don't think so." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "That's exactly what it's saying." <laughs> and then he was just like, "I mean, that's my opinion." And I was like, "Well, why did you think it?" And it was it just kind of like, oh, but- "Yeah, we jumping in this car, right? You know, yeah. jumping in this conflict car." And then it was like, "I don't care. You don't see my perspective." I mean, how did we? I mean, <laughs> how crying. did we get here? Like, you know, it was about a song, <laughs> literally about a song. So now, when I hear the song, it literally is a Christian song. When I hear the song, I just look at him like, so how you think? <laughs> He's like, well, listen to it. Nah, it's me. It's <laughs> cute. <laughs> Susan, come on. Yes. I'm feeling some type of way. Oh, that's, hilarious. that's so good. Mm-hmm. So I want to um, talk about, so we, you know, when we were doing kind of post-marital counseling, we walked mm-hmm. through that a little bit too. Mm-hmm. Um, and we started doing like one-on-ones. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and we walked through a book. Yes, we did. A mighty book. Okay. Listen, highly recommend. Catch this one. Um, the Emotionally recommend. Healthy Woman. Took us out. Took Listen, me out. it is such a good book. All Ooh. the emotionally healthy, like, are, are good. Like the leader, the, well, what's his name? Peter? Peter? His name's Pete. Scazzaro. Pete Scazzaro. Yes, okay. homeboy's in New York, and he has a wonderful church. Yeah. I mean, this You've been to his church? No. One of the girls that we discipled, um, she actually was in Thrive, mm-hmm. and after she finished, she lived in New York, and after the class, she said because of the Thrive class, mm-hmm. she went to his church, and now she's a member, and she's leading groups. Really? Yeah, so she literally sent me a picture of her and him, and he was like, Nikki, thank you for everything. Girl, I- I thought, to me, you know, and I'm a fan, people. Right. That, yeah, I was like, I'm a fan. In my face. Peace, yes. Peace. <laughs> yes. And so he changed my whole life, like I was telling you mm-hmm. before. Like, for me, you know, I would have positioned myself or kind of seen myself as being spiritually mature. Me and my husband were pastoring. Mm-hmm. We're doing all these things. And we went on a marriage retreat. And I remember, you know, you know, they gave us an assessment to take that morning, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm just like, oh, we're at a pastor's retreat with some pastors and I'm filling out the chart. And you know how it is with assessment. Like you answering the questions, you know, you don't want to lie, but you don't want to have a bad answer. Mm-hmm. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Like you just like, <laughs> you know, should I tell yeah, the whole like, truth? Maybe and then I was like, no, I'm about to be honest. Cause I know, you know, it's about our maturity mm-hmm. girl. He had like seven areas that highlights emotional maturity. And one of them you could um, rate, as a infant, it was like infant, child, adolescent, young person, or a mature mm-hmm. girl. Out of the seven areas, I probably had two that were mature. I had maybe two that was like, wait, like one that was like young adult, mm-hmm. and then two that was adolescent, and two that was infant. Ooh. And girl, when I saw that infant, I looked at my chest. I said, "Let me see yours." <laughs> <laughs> what you got? Compare, <laughs> compare, compare. Like, what you talking about? No, no, let me see. Cause I'm like, I know good and well, my grown behind ain't no infant. Ain't no. And I'm like, let me read this thing. Let me go back to the question. Cause I probably read it wrong. Cause I'm clearly I'm not a baby. Right. And <laughs> like, that clearly I'm not a baby. Girl, I'm no baby. You know what I mean? I'm grown out here. Right. Leading people to Christ. Right. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. A straight baby. I'm talking about <laughs> swaddling clothes, baby. Wrapped in swaddling a manger. clothes. Baby. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking yeah. about whole diapers. Oh. And literally, I'm sitting here. And the areas where I was an infant was in boundaries. Mm. Limits and boundaries. Ooh. And I think inter- internally, immediately, when I read it, I knew. Mm-hmm. This is correct. <laughs> right. Like, this is you like, correct. Okay, you got me the first yeah. time. <laughs> but what I didn't want, you know, and I, what what was so sad, you know, the guy was like, all right, so we're going to share. No, we're not going to share. Oh, we're who? not going to share. What I'm going to share. Who is share? <laughs> I'm not sharing. <laughs> He's like, you know, raise your hand and babe, not me. You know what I'm like? And God uh-huh. said, we going to start lying? This, this is worse. You know? Not- and so it was boundaries. And the other one was about grief and sorrow. Oh. That I did not know how to process grief. And it took me about a, almost two two years mm-hmm. to really come to grips with the fact that I have not learned to grieve well. Mm-hmm. And I've experienced a lot of death in my life. Like, um, my mom had uh, two, I was the only child because my mom had me first and then she had two, my sisters, mm-hmm. and she had to carry them to term. Mm-hmm. But through my, my whole life, she still referenced my sister. So she was like, it's your sister's birthday. So I've lived with these sisters who never existed. Jesus. Does that make sense? Yes. And it's, it's kind of like we're acknowledging this death. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, if she, even if she says, mom, I love you. But it was just kind of like the way that I learned how to talk about death was like it's present. Mm-hmm. But how do you really grieve something you never really experienced? Right. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And then when people would die in my life, or my, my dad passed, my, my grandfather's passed, my uncle, who's like a dad passed. Mm. All these people are passing in my life. And I literally would just kind of cry, go to the funeral, and they don't, they don't exist anymore. Mm. But when you're actually dealing with grief that way, honestly, when you understand the process of grief, that one day at the grave site is not grieving. Mm-hmm. And so I am... Literally, and everybody see my personality. Mm-hmm. So just imagine all this death is happening in my life, and I'm just moving, moving forward. Mm-hmm. Where is all this stuff going? Right, right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I realized 
I don't know how to process loss. Ooh. And so it was only until, and being real vulnerable, only mm-hmm. until we, we started going through the IVF process and I had my first negative. In 2020, it, I'll never forget, you know, we're now, um, you know, everybody is isolated. Mm-hmm. I'm going through IVF. I've gotten a negative and I lose it. And I don't know how to hold myself together. And I'm still, we still got ministry with mm-hmm. Fort City. And the ministry is growing. Mm-hmm. And I'm having to be present. Mm-hmm. And I am breaking down mentally. Mm-hmm. Like, I, this I can't hold together. I can't, Ooh. I can deal with other people's loss, mm-hmm. but this was my own loss. Mm-hmm. I had never had a loss in my, in, of my own. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like this was my body. This was my, and I'm just like, I don't know how to navigate. I don't know what to do. And yeah. I just broke. I didn't have anything, you know? Yeah. And so I realized in that moment, like just through that book, like we were going through stuff like, mm-hmm. I am not okay. Yeah. And we've been hyping up this spiritual maturity. But nobody's been having these conversations about what it looks like for us to be emotionally mature. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is where she started coming in, right? Right, right. right? And she was just like, boom, I got it for you. Quit lying. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know you're what I mean? lying, girl. Like, I was like, oh, I'm not lying. She's like, yeah, you told him you was doing well. Yes. Um, yes. I was just trying to say the thing that we usually say. Like, they say, you know, you should just be like, I'm doing good. I'm telling you. So, hit Pete Scazzaro, mm-hmm. if you're even listening. Like, your ministry, your book, yes. your... The truth, it just really hit me hard because, again, I want to be whole. You know, and if you're Mm -hmm. here, I'm telling you right now, if you can get a chance to, emotionally healthy leader, are we telling it? Yes. Yes. Emotionally healthy leader, healthy spirituality, healthy woman. All of them. All of the things, right? Um, Because the foundation is is that we are meant to be whole. Mm -hmm. We're meant to be whole. And we can carry. I don't think it's a facade. Mm -hmm. I just think that people have learned how to navigate through church. Mm Mm-hmm without emotion yeah or yeah. the emotion that we have reserved is just tears and worship mm-hmm. screams and shouts yeah you know what i mean we'll get mad with the enemy mm-hmm. but we don't know how to deal with the anger that we have with ourselves yes oh the anger we have with our spouse the anger we have with the people who we are around mm-hmm. you know what i mean and even and, god and even god mm-hmm. and we don't know how to reconcile Listen. You know, we don't have to reconcile those moments and mm-hmm. so i just think the book really put it in your face yeah like, you really want to grow? Mm-hmm. All right, let's let's talk about how you feel. Yeah, 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 girl. So. And I think um, even to even to now, uh, just representing like me starting to embrace emotions. I remember yes. when I started to like embrace emotion. At first, like it, I was supposed to feel empowered, right? Yeah. I immediately felt like I was the weakest link all the time because <laughs> I would just be in there like, they're like, okay, Iman, you got anything to say? Like, you know, we do with like chapels, all different yes. things that we do, right? And I'm like. <laughs> I'm not okay. Like I know everybody's saying they doing good, yes. but I'm struggling with you know like that. And but I but you know and it wasn't until later like people were like I wish I could have that. Like I wish yes. I could cry. Like I don't like, know when. Come in, after you get all that, they'll come in a secret like the kids and be like, Hey, I felt this. If you don't tell right, people, tell everybody that yes. it was the most beautiful thing you experienced. Yes. You know like that. Like I wish I could have shared the way you shared today. Like, but in turn, I watched though. Mm-hmm. I watched though how mm-hmm. it would be maybe two or three people the next mm-hmm. week that would just finally like break mm-hmm. out and I'm just like yes get, get it in you me yes. so like you know like that like Love share how you're feeling like that or whatever and you know so but yeah at first it felt like I was very I'm just like dang every oh, week no. I'm in here crying mm-hmm. I'm just a mess like yeah. am I disqualified even in that I was like am I disqualifying myself girl because oh, I, <laughs> I'm over here every week they like everything is good and isn't that well I see myself as this and I'm like when they get to me I'm like. I don't know. Like mm-hmm. something is like, I feel like I'm grieving with something. Yes. Like, I don't know. Like, and I was Woo! like, and it's not a person, but I feel like I'm grieving like a Girl. loss of the years or the time, maybe during COVID or something like that. Like, I feel like I lost this time that I can never get back and that I, you know, it's I'm not so going to be who I need to be or, or something like that. And I'm just like, I don't know if that's what it is, but I feel that. That's like, so good. you know, just all of that. And I'm, that's what I'm, I'm kind of talking about. And everybody else in there just like, I love when you said the part about, you know, and I'm just like, no, I'm going through it, you know, and I was like, and I need to voice these things out. And, and though I said later seasons, people came to me and was just like, that was, you know, your vulnerability was your superpower. Mm-hmm. 
and um, they were like, it, it was very admirable mm. for a lot of people. And so now I try to lead in that way. I noticed that it promotes more of a safety with my, my teams, yes. my people around me. Yes. Um, and I thought that, like I said, like, like I said, at first it felt like I was undone and I was weak. I realized mm-hmm. that it was strength. Like It was. It, it is strength. It's not mm-hmm. even was. It is strength. Um, and I try to fight to keep my vulnerability um, and stay open in that way. Yeah. yeah. I, I was thinking about when you said vulnerability is your superpower. Mm-hmm. It, it's your superpower because you recognize the, well, the vulnerability is recognizing that in spaces where you feel um, naked, mm-hmm. that you choose not to do what Adam and Eve did. Ooh. Not to try to cover like, themselves. Before this sin issue came, mm-hmm. them jokers was naked the whole time. Right. And they were okay with it. <laughs> Just okay. Right. But the mm-hmm. moment that the enemy um, kind of suggested the fruit, they made the, you know, made the decision, now mm-hmm. being naked is a problem. Mm-hmm. And so when we start to realize that that type of level of transparency and vulnerability is, we normalize that, mm-hmm. then I don't feel uncomfortable if I'm the only person in here crying. I'm okay with my right, skin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. That's what I said. Know? By the 10th time, I was just like, and y'all yes. know what time it is. I might cry, but yes. I'm going to tell y'all this. You know, like that. And I was just like, I know that I'm winning. Like, you know, I literally was like, I feel myself growing and becoming like just free in all these different ways. Yes. And even even to discuss who put this stuff on me. Like, because I'm like, who Girl. told me that I needed these clothes? Girl. Like, and that's what, yeah, and I, in my mind, I mean, again, we're not back there with them, but I'm just like, where did they even think about sewing leaves together? <laughs> right. You know right. what I mean? Well, who made this suggestion? Because right. ain't nobody. <laughs> wears it together. Yes, who, who it? made out this leaf pattern? Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Gonna get, get some strength. Right. You know this, what I mean? They'll do it. Yes. <laughs> Gonna get that big leaf. Yes. You know what I mean? And how did you know that the parts that you had, those were the things that needed to be covered? Mm. You know, and so it's just, again, it just shows how when we start to, when we're distancing ourselves away from God, Mm -hmm. we uh, are left with all these different suggestions that aren't true. Mm. Listen. You know, but the closer that we get to the Father, Mm -hmm. who is true, we start to discover, like, this is what is Mm -hmm. the truth. I should have just ran my naked butt to you. <laughs> right. I should have just came. <laughs> I ate that apple. I did. <laughs> right. And I, I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. We could have done that yeah. with it. Yes. And it's just like, I, 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 please, I don't even know what the policy is around here. You know, I, I don't know. <laughs> right. You know, never seen nobody even eat something. He said it's not to you. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But um, I thought about hiding, but that just seemed dumb. Right. So here I am. I yeah, ate that apple. Am. What's up? You know? And it's like, what? Would life look more if we started walking in the light? Mm. You know, if we created spaces where walking in the light was okay. Mm. But it's almost just like what's normalized is hiding. Yeah. And that's why, and I think people get more upset when people get caught. I think people get upset when people get caught, one, because they're disappointed. But I also think that it's because we still haven't normalized whatever it is they were Mm. hiding from. Yeah. Shh. Cause sis, okay. that's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. And I think even in my own vulnerability, it's made me see people differently. Like when people mm-hmm. come to me with a sin issue mm-hmm. or whatever like that, like Ooh. I used to be like, Oh God, what am I going to do? How am I going to like that? I'm like, Oh man, how did they get into this? Like now I'm just like, okay. Like, you know, like, mm-hmm. and, and it's just like, a, okay. Like mm-hmm. it, I, I'm not, you know, like, I'm not shy. I'm not worried. And, you know, I'm literally just like, one, I know that there's nothing God can yes, do like that. Yes, I'm yes. literally like, okay, you know, like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, you know, you know what you need. Mm-hmm. You need more people to be vulnerable with you. Yes. You need more community. Yes. Like you need, and I'm just like, yes. So I actually, you know, I'm like, I actually want to invite you in closer. Mm-hmm. Like, and they're like, huh? You sure? I was gonna sit. I, I was see. gonna sit myself down. I was gonna run away and go this way. And I'm like, yes. Why would you run away? From your help or like people who need you, like and I literally was, and the Lord started to challenge me, and he like he'll say you need to be vulnerable with that yeah. person. And, and shame will make you do mm-hmm. that though, right? Yeah. Shame will tell you, hey, you need to cover that up, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. And but I think, I mean, hey, the scripture says that Jesus despised shame. So mm-hmm. I'm saying if Jesus is over here despising shame, why am I grouping with shame? Why right. am I partnering with shame? And I always tell people, shame is something. Shame is like 
what like it's like the worst friend mm-hmm. because it'll come to your house Ooh. and it'll bring other people. Oh my god! But did I tell you to bring somebody? <laughs> and like, well, I was when I was on the way to your house, mm-hmm. I saw a uh, fear. And I saw oh. guilt, and they were saying they ain't had nowhere to go. So I was just like, "Well, let me go ahead and get in the car." Listen. And so then it's like, just imagine somebody oh coming knocking on your door, and they just be like, "Girl, what you doing? Who are these people in the back? They fine, they fine." And so shame come Ooh. in, and then guilt come and sit there, and then all of a sudden guilt be there, and he be like, "Well, you know, you you know." And I'm like, "When you start talking, I don't know you. You know, guilt he talk too much." And then shame be like, "It's okay, it's okay." And it's like, "Well, what y'all got to eat?" And it, like I tell people, shame will come in your house, and they'll know not. Never leave. Yeah. It'll make itself comfortable. It literally mm-hmm. walk in your house and then all of like it's just I'm just coming over here for a little while. And then they'll be like, Hey, can I s- you mind if I stay over? Yeah. We ain't got no room. It's all right. I'll sleep here on the couch. You know, and I, I just feel like a lot of times we wear shame. We'll wear it to the point that it becomes an accessory. Mm. And it affect the way that we literally navigate in our life. The reason that I'm altered the way that, the reason I say this, the reason I covered this up, the reason I haven't told my whole story, the reason I don't disclose is not because I'm not aware that the truth won't set people free. Mm-hmm. It's because shame has told me that people can't handle my truth. Ooh. And Yes. Are there some people that can't handle your truth? Mm-hmm. Maybe. Because they shame too. Right. <laughs> right. Because they, yeah, they shame. Okay. They, shame they like, too. ooh. Yeah, it's just like, girl, I don't want people out here telling their business because then they'll bring up my business. Right. Yeah. Then I got, girl. I don't want to convince me to share mine. Yes. Oh, I don't wear yes. this. But it's just kind of like, what would it look like mm-hmm. if we woke up in the morning and we were no longer guilted by shame? Yeah. What would that look like? I'm feeling you. What would it look like if we weren't motivated by guilt or fear? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in these conversations that you're having with people that you're able to just be like, girl, we was fussing out the door. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> right. It was bad. And it doesn't mm-hmm. absolve. I'll mm-hmm. say this. A lot of people just kind of be like, you know, but we need to be responsible. That is true. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't res- absolve responsibility. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just saying, I don't have to carry this with me to heal. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, I, you don't. You yeah, know what I mean? So yeah. I love to hear that you are in this space where you're seeing people where they are and you're inviting them with all of their brokenness. Yeah. I think yeah. it's beautiful, Amon. And the way God has just, I mean, I guess revealed it even more to me that it is something that he desires for me. And so mm. I, I was sitting at lunch one day with a group of women or whatever like that. And um, we brought up, this app, right? I sh- I made a post about it on mm-hmm. t- like the Lord told me. Oh, make a, I heard. The Lord told me make a post about it on t- I girl, saw and I, it. And let me tell you something. Girl, you probably, wrecked the internet with people that People probably think I posted that in in was like extremely happy about it. I sat there and I cried. Why? And I I cried and I was just like because I knew when I knew it was gonna it was gonna have freedom attached to it, right? Mm-hmm. But there was also this fear mm-hmm. that. I kind of was like, God, I, when I started this thing, I thought it was going to just be me doing like some fun, like, mm-hmm. oh, she's ready, she's ready. But I have been praying about all my content and without mm-hmm. the post. So when God was like, post this or whatever, I was like, I was cool with it being a conversation. Girl, you out there. I was cool with it being a conversation <laughs> on Monday. I don't think I was cool with possibly not being popular because mm-hmm. I would be rattling and, you know, messing with some things that, you know, like the other side. Because it, because so then I did, you know, so, you know, it was popular with the, you know, Christians, and they was just like, yeah, I want freedom this, and da-da-da-da, whatever. But it actually got to a side of Facebook where they was just like, what's wrong with Twitter? And she must be some kind of addict, and she must be wow. some kind of da-da-da. And the Lord was just like, go back to your side of freedom, baby, because nobody told you to even come over here. Like, you know, and I was just like, amen, God. Amen. Amen. What about amen. that? Um, but I, I was. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, I was just like, well, God, this, this, this can shake some things up. Mm-hmm. Like, and I thought I was going to be posting some nice sweet content. Mm-hmm. Like everybody love yourselves mm-hmm. and it's going to be great and get mm-hmm. ready for whatever God has for mm-hmm. you. And the Lord was like, no, that, if you thought that, that what this was, nah, I saw a ministry. Like it, it's crazy going back to your emotionally healthy woman, right? Mm-hmm. The first thing that she said was quit trying to what? Quit being afraid of what others think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and I think we can be like bad girls and be like, um, I don't care what nobody thinks. Girl, half of your you, motivations, every right. child, you, I, down to you lie, down you to lie, the, you. yes, <laughs> down to the way that you put your lashes on. Honey. <laughs> Listen, you are thinking about somebody. You think about, you know what what I mean? about me. Oh, yes. they gonna like this girl. Yes. So I just, you know, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, I, I, I definitely love when the father brings us to those places of sobriety mm-hmm. that we're able to kind of understand, like. You can't just quit 
caring about what other people think or what you say quit what's the quit being afraid of what others think quit being afraid mm-hmm. of what others think and we understand the culprit um that fear always attacks his love mm-hmm. right so we understand when they're really trying to say if, if uh his wife uh pete's wife was saying quit being afraid of what other people think mm-hmm. what she is trying to get us to put our face toward is being established in love and truth mm-hmm. you get what mm-hmm. i mean yes. so it's kind of like on my own i just can't I ain't about to do that. Yeah. Girl, I think so we Mm-hmm. That listen, I would just be like, okay. Because at that table I was at the table, I brought this conversation up and mm-hmm. I was very vulnerable about, mm-hmm. you know, I mean and I'm vulnerable. I'm I'm here. We here. Yeah, we I basically here. talked about I was like, baby, this app right here that got me in some trouble, got me in a whole yeah. you know, a whole pornography addiction mm-hmm. that I never thought I would have. It was oh, like wow. that. And you know, I was exposed to pornography at a very young age or like yeah. that. But, you know, who thought when you get married that this would be something that girl up or whatever, you know. And so yeah. when I was uh, literally just, again, like walking through my process, I, how I ended up there and all this stuff like that. I was just like, man, I'm this minister. I'm this, this I'm this, that. How could I ever get here? Like, or whatever. And then the Lord was just like, it's a lot of people that have gotten here. What? Yes. It's a lot of people who, you know, that. And he was like, not, and I'm not make. he wasn't not in a way of making an excuse for me, mm-hmm. but once he started walking me through the healing of it and he was like, and now you got to speak about it. Mm-hmm. And I, so literally I saw the app on one of my baby's phone. Right. And I literally was like, delete that app now, you know, like that, or whatever. So it brought up a conversation. I was very vulnerable. And at the table, every single woman that was sitting with me said, yes. I, that happened to me too. Yes, that like, or I just had it deleted a day ago. Or I just had the whatever that. Or I'm even still struggling with it to this day. Mm-hmm. And thank you for being vulnerable because I would have thought that oh, I was the Lord. only person in ministry or the only person who you know was a you know like, was a wife or this or that like who was struggling in this way. And when I say it, just I literally was just like, man. Like, imagine me living in shame with that. Yes. For so long. Like, yes. Like, even the other people that's attached to the freedom that, you know, like, all the stuff that God is doing, mm-hmm. and you would rather live in shame. Yes, and shame always tries to encourage you to be quiet. Mm-hmm. It literally carries with it a muscle, and it's just saying, put this on your mouth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Shh. And so just imagine how many people struggle in silence, mm-hmm. and they, they're not encouraged to open up their mouth until they hear a sound. Yeah. That sound has to come from us. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. That sound has to come from somebody. Somebody has to speak up, mm-hmm. you know? And again, opening your mouth, does that incur conflict? Yes. Yeah. But truth be told, conflict already happens. <laughs> right. It's just, you just doing it by yourself. Right. I'd rather be in conflict, have a whole gang of people in here with me. Right, right, and right. Sharing the load. <laughs> right. When I gotta carry this by myself, listen, in silent, listen, girl, that's like silence in the land. Girl, silence in the land. Little Clarice, <laughs> you know, no man. Girl, that's crazy. That's crazy. I when I say I love you, girl, I that love whole you. thing that really blessed me. I'm, I, I just, I love the fact that you are fully embracing this space that you have mm-hmm. um, emotionally. Mm-hmm. I, I, I even looking at you now just to see your own just emotional health. Mm-hmm. And here, I'm going to share this um, thing with you. One of the things that mm-hmm. Pete was saying here are seven areas. You remember I was telling you about the baby when I was a baby? Yes. Okay, so here it are um, the top ten symptoms of a emotionally unhealthy Ooh, person. Please. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna just right, get my so notes out too. Yeah, it's out, that. Yeah. Yes, I hope y'all got a notebook out. Get, this has been get, so good, uh, y'all. Uh, I mean, and if you, you know, if it if it hits you, you know what I mean, just check it off. Ooh. Um, so the first one, the top ten system, symptoms, mm-hmm. um, is using God to run from God. Ooh. Yeah, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna read the list. I ain't even go through them yet. Using God to run from God. Mm-hmm. The next one is ignoring anger, sadness, and fear. Mm. Um, number three is dying to the wrong things. Mm. So those are um, the fourth symptom of being emotionally unhealthy mm-hmm. is denying the impact of the past on the present. Ooh. Girl, that's that's, that's the way you went right there. It is. You know what I mean? And that's, you remember when I was telling you, even when people would pass Mm -hmm. or if I would experience loss, that it literally almost would be the past don't exist. Mm. It's just like, all I keep thinking about is the future, the future. And I get it. You keep, you keep, like people are like, let's move forward. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
But do you know what you're dragging yeah. while you're moving Shoot. forward? You got boulders of yeah. the past. Ooh. You know what I mean? And you trying to, it's almost like uh, an elephant, like in a fine china. Mm-hmm. Like, are we not going to talk about that you big? Right. Walking in this front? <laughs> right. I mean, your, your butt just knocking stuff over. And I feel like we got so much baggage and stuff mm-hmm. that we carrying around in our relationships. And we trying to figure out why people are so angry. Right. They're angry because you hit them. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Literally. Like, like bitch, move. You got, small. <laughs> you got a whole bunch of baggage. Yeah. You need to acknowledge this past. Mm-hmm. You don't have to live in the past. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I get it. Some people are like, you know, I don't want to just go back to the past and just dwell in the past. Mm-hmm. You ain't got to dwell. Right. But we need to offload. We <laughs> right. need to acknowledge. We need to that. talk about like, yes, that thing did bother you. Yes, and that's okay. Like, and that's okay. Like, and I know it's bothering you because every time we get in a similar situation, come on, baby. Anytime anybody it shake up. the table, come it on. show up. It you know? show up. All right, keep going. it show up. Mm. And so the next one is um, dividing life into secular and sacred compartments. Ooh, Ooh. and that right there is something because what yes. that basically is saying. The God live in the sacred, mm-hmm. but all your other stuff live in the secular. You yes. know what I mean? Uh-huh. So I I understand a lot of believers. It's kind of almost like we'll say stuff like my life. Uh-huh. You know, I want to live for the Lord, but what about my life? Mm. Galatians two twenty <laughs> had me thinking like your life was crucified with Christ, right, baby? Did you know what I mean? Did and gone. <laughs> <laughs> your life, and they're like, well, what kind of life I got? Uh, you got one, but it's in him. Right. You know what I mean? And it doesn't necessarily mean that it means like you in church all day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But we don't know how to live in Christ. You know what I mean? We, we live for Christ, but we don't know how to live in him. Mm -hmm. That time is time. There's no secular or sacred time. Girl. Yes. Yes. I I read a whole book on that. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Number six is doing for God instead of being with God. Yes. And we know about that one, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, because we we so big on being productive and getting things done. If right. we can have a whole shirt that be like I'm productive, everybody would everybody buy would want it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like yes, yes, like, yes. But we ain't got. Am no I shirt resting? Like, am yeah. I taking a zap? I bet you won't get one and, and say I take and, a zap. But yes, and because you don't, because <laughs> you don't. And the thing <laughs> is, it's just like, what if we promoted what God got done instead of what we got done? Mm. We don't even know what he got done because all Cause we, we worried about working is yes, getting our list, talking about what we didn't did. But God is just like, I promise you, you'll get most stuff done if you were aware of what I've done for you. Baby, I'm clutching my pearls that I'm not even wearing. I can't. Girl, can't. Because I mean, when you think about it, and people always like, when I think about it, good. Uh-huh. When I think about it, what is it? Jesus and what he's done for me. Uh-huh. You know what? Most of the time, what they're thinking about is he brought you out of the pit. He brought you out of here. He brought mm-hmm. you out of that situation. God, that. He he's still doing that. Right. He's, he got so much other stuff. Right. You so know what much I mean? more. So much. You don't more. even want to. You want to know him in another way. Yes. Uh-huh. And I mean, I when I yes, think about his goodness and, mm-hmm. and all that stuff. But I'm just saying, like, I mean, yes to the productivity. But I'm telling you, God has done so much. Mm-hmm. And there's some stuff that you're trying to do that He already worked it out. Yeah. You can save yourself some time. I'm just saying. Oof. All right. So that's uh, doing that six, for God huh? instead of being with God. Number uh-huh. six. Number seven is spiritualizing away conflict. We literally just got to talking about that. Spiritualizing away, away conflict. conflict. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This we do not. Good. We want to sweep that stuff under the rug. Mm-hmm. And here's some things that say. I just want to pick this one because it's pretty good. It says some of us may be guilty of one of the following: say one thing to people's faces and then another behind their backs. Ooh, that Ooh. spiritualizing away conflict. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Make promises we have no intention of keeping. <laughs> it's me. No, I mean, <laughs> it's me. When I tell you this book be coming for your whole it's life, me. Uh-oh. <laughs> you just be like, I'm about to lose weight. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, it said, <laughs> Oh, you, this is a good one. Ooh. You know, when you are spiritualizing away conflict, when you give people the silent treatment. Is me. When I tell you, me and that silent treatment, literally, <laughs> it was kind of like a tool in the bag. I'm, I'm carrying it in my purse all yes. the time. Yes. Oh, you want to make me mad? Ooh. You need anything? Nope. Girl, I will one one listen, word you so quick. Listen, and that's why I was like that. So that that when we got in that conflict, well, recently I literally was like, God, I got permission to. I don't be giving you everything and everything away. <laughs> so I got permission in at least in one area to give, and I, and I literally was like for a week, oh, and, I'm, no. and I was like, and I ain't even going, I ain't even going, I'm not even going to tell, I'm going to tell him that I'm not talking to him for a week. Ooh. I was like, I'll do, I'll even do him better. Ooh. I ain't even going to just do it. I'm going to tell him. Oh, you get a week. 
of me not talking to you. Ooh. God was like, girl, if you don't get your hot up there. Girl, the fact that you gave this man notice that he not to be. <laughs> and so when I told him that, he was like, you really was going to come tell me that. I said, I really girl. was on the way up here and God dealt with me before I got to you. <laughs> Literally, I was like, I deserve this God, I deserve. I've been giving you my yes in every way, and you know how we I'm spiritualize, baby, spiritualize all this stuff. And he like, did you hear yourself? You Girl. think you deserve to be foolish Woo. because I done called you up in every other area? Woo. Like, so now you get to get some room and space. Shut no. Up. <laughs> yes, I got a few more. I ain't gonna come do on, all come of on, them. Come this on. one is a good one too. Become sarcastic. Oh, when I can, I'm, I'm telling you, when I first got this. I w- you could tell the arguments was in my soul. And I was just like, what you mean? Anytime you <laughs> say like, what you mean, what you, mean? you know it's got nah, something. That ain't, like, oh, yeah. I mean, that's really? You. That's and then you. here's one that he said. He's like, tell only half the truth because we can't bear to hurt a friend's feelings. <sighs> Spiritualizing away conflict. Ooh. Say yes when we mean no. This is so good. Uh, find an outside person with whom we can share in order to ease our anxiety. Mm. Girl, I'm over here. I'm just like, <laughs> this is, I'm over. I'm like, okay. Here is the statement about that. It says, "Out of a desire to bring true peace, Jesus disrupted the false peace all around him." And that is something that I'm telling you. I want to grow and mm. mature. Cause I, t- I can tell you, I've been in a lot of different spaces where, and it comes down to that that whole mis- uh, facade and mm-hmm. mask. Where you know it's false. Mm-hmm. Like, that, I, that's why I love the fact that you were in that room. And I'm not saying everybody had to be feeling some, a particular way. Because, hey, if you're happy, you're happy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's kind of like, if you can fully own yourself, yeah, I'm about to cry. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, this false sense of peace, this about to be disrupted. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and especially, I'll just say, to truly, you know, in a lot of, like, church spaces mm-hmm. that we have and I, I love the local body right yeah but i just think that in order for us to really see healing in these particular areas we got to be start to be honest mm-hmm. right and i even say for me that's why i say i, I definitely can relate because imagine pastor nikki yeah you know what i mean like uh, again i've heard like how you did this whole introduction and it's just kind of like yeah but pastor nikki got thoughts or co- comments or ideas mm-hmm. or perspectives that actually I don't think I really agree with this kind of facade. Yeah. Or if I say, you know, somebody say something, and most of the time we'd be like, oh, that was good. Sometimes in my mind I'd be like, but it wasn't. That wasn't. It ain't that you know what I mean? That that ain't even true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like we just learn how to kind of accommodate. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We don't want to rock the boat. Mm-hmm. Or we don't want to be the one who's initiating it. Yeah. The boat start rocking, I move a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, but don't yeah, let me be the one. Yeah. But girl, yes. Uh, and I think even even um I think some of the stuff I had tied to that person who initiates those mm. things is I was just like, I don't want to be problematic. Because we will make them people the problem. Listen. Yes. And I literally was like, Are well, difficult. I don't want to be the, I don't want to be a difficult person. Like, yes. you know, even in like certain things I've been experiencing more lately, I'm like, man, I feel like I need to speak. Mm-hmm. I need to say something. Like, if I love if I say I love Ooh, girl. you, then I need to speak up. Yes. Like, you know, like the Lord dealt with me. He was like, "No, if you say you love this person, mm-hmm. then you be like you not speaking to them mm-hmm. is, and telling them the truth of how you feel is being dishonest." Yep. And I'm like, basically, every time I'm around you, I, it's a facade. I'm yes. trying to muscle up. Yes. This. Yes. I'm good because like, I'm trying to spiritualize conflict avoidance. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm like, trying to figure that out. Right. And I'm, I'm try- like, okay. Yeah. And yeah, I'm, but it's not good. It's not good. It's not good at all. It's not good. Yeah, <laughs> but th- that's okay because we learn it. Yeah. And the thing is, is that the way that we can look at it now is not like, why didn't I do it? We just continue to be conformed to the image of Jesus. Mm-hmm. This is what Jesus is doing. Jesus yeah. understood that when he opened his mouth, mm-hmm. these Pharisees and Sadducees about to be really upset. Yeah. And he understood that they actually had the authority mm-hmm. and they were the voices that people were listening to. Yeah. So just imagine... If Jesus was insecure about himself and he felt like he needed them mm. to establish his authority in the earth, then he would have went by their system so that he could get mm-hmm. get his father's will done. Mm-hmm. But when you, and I'm saying to you and what I'm discovering, when you begin to have your identity established in the Lord and mm-hmm. you know who you are, you don't need other people 
who even may have yeah, taking notes. a I'm voice like, or it's so good. who who have the voice of others to establish who you are. And I used to live mm-hmm. that way for a lot of times. I would be silent because I would just be like, I want the people who have the authority or the ears of people to think well of me because they establish mm-hmm. They establish, they don't establish nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They may establish a tone, but you can't, I know who I am. Mm -hmm. And and even if people, you know, I feel challenging, even when I didn't want to do social media for a while, Mm -hmm. because I think I wanted to keep the image that people had of me. Yeah. Same, same, same. Yeah, the past Nikki, oh, oh, Mm -hmm. they go past Nikki, she's so kind, she's so whatever. And I didn't think I was going to be ready for the comment saying that I'm this and I'm that, because I wanted not only to be liked, I still wasn't sure who I was. Yeah. And yeah. so if you're going to tell me that I'm a bad person because of what your perspective is, mm-hmm. then I'm going to be looking at that comment like, that's me. Yeah. That ain't me. Yeah. I don't know who you're talking about. Right. You, you can put my name on it, but that ain't <laughs> right. me. Right. It's who? It's no. somebody. It's whoever is in your <laughs> head, but right. it ain't me. You right. You know what I mean? And so I love to see that we have an example. Mm-hmm. Jesus was our example to Ooh. show us that this man knew who he was. He didn't have to act proud. Yeah. He wasn't provoked by Satan. Like, he didn't even allow Satan to provoke him to sh- prove who he was. Mm-hmm. But he knew who he was. So when moments of conflict came, yeah. this brother showed up. Mm-hmm. He showed up. Yes. And you can show up. And that's why mm-hmm. I'm saying, girl, when I tell you, show up, Amon. Yeah. Keep Ooh. showing up. Mm-hmm. Keep showing up. Keep disrupting yeah. all of this stuff that's saying, be, you know, you want to continue to elevate? Mm-hmm. You want to continue to rise? You want to continue to be known? Baby, he already know me. L- listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> the person who I'm trying, the person who I listen. want to know me knows me. Listen, you in my conversation to myself. I'm Ooh, standing at that window. Really? Right here. Literally. And I was. That's and, water knowledge. Listen, and when I say I was literally in tears and I was like, God, like, I need, like, I was just like. I don't, but I feel like because even more recently it's been kind of challenged of like I'm trying to be famous or what you trying to do or who you trying to be and I'm like I'm just obeying God like yes. and I don't care I'm like, I don't care if only two people like it mm-hmm. like if that was for them two people mm-hmm. like I was just like I don't like I was like y'all don't care they like this way you need to do your content and people more people are, are get with it or whatever and I'm just like. Uh, I know all that stuff y'all talking, and I ain't saying I'm. I'm like I ain't saying I'm against all of it, but I'm just like I'm gonna be me, and I'm like, hey, what if, if we all look the same on the internet? What? 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 I was like, God works. I was like, He operates in our authenticity, and so I, you you telling me I got to look like every single other person on here? And I was like, No, I know who He told me to be. Yeah. I know who Iman is, yeah. and I was like, I just gotta believe that who this is for is gonna be who this is for. Yeah. All this, and I was just like, God, I just want to make your name great. I just want what you want for your people. Yeah. I just want your message to be spread. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, and I, I mean, it was a whole comment. I'm just crying. I'm like, and I, and I, and I then I realized I was like, I was, I was like, I don't want people to think that is this. Mm-hmm. I don't want people to think that I'm trying to be famous. Mm-hmm. I don't want people to think. And I'm like, I know what you showed me about the businesses and all the different things I'm going to do. You told me yeah. what they're going to do. And I was like, but it ain't for that particular purpose. Yeah. And then the Lord was just like, you care too much about what people think. Yes. And the thing is, is that that type of mental management is really anxiety. Mm-hmm. Anxiety is literally trying to ment- mentally manage the future. Yeah. Who Who is in 2028 right now? Nobody. 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 <laughs> Unless we in some type okay. of multiple, multi-universe. <laughs> right. Ain't nobody, nobody in 2028. Yes. <laughs> right? But we are trying to literally get mm-hmm. people right now to, to, we're trying to adjust ourselves so these people in 2024 can still like us in 2028. And who is to say that they still going to be alive? And who is to say I'm still going to be here? Listen. Who is to say that my Jesus won't be coming riding on the cloud coming to get me? You know Listen. what I mean? My thing Listen. Listen. My oh whole my point God. is. Woo. My whole point is that we're trying to ment- mentally manage things that we have no control over. Mm-hmm. And even if we did, like even my whole point is like I cannot control how what you think of me. And even if I've adjusted enough that w- what you think of me is something that I enjoy, I will have to continue to stay on all the time for you to keep that position. Ooh, that's too much work. Listen, you you hear me? And it ain't doing, how is that benefiting me? Right, not. It's, that's exactly why Jesus said in Matthew 6, he was like, take no thought on all this stuff. How can worry make you taller? If he said it,